This is the fourth video in a series on setting up a character for Human IK in Maya 2012. In this video I'm going to cover uh, doing the actual binding of the skin, just go over a couple of different things you can do in terms of binding. Um, so we are going to use a, a smooth bind on this, but before I do the bind I want to make sure that I don't have any history on this and I want to make sure that all of my um, mesh and groups have the identity transform, which looks like this. Zeros for translates and rotates and ones for scale. Uh, so the group that I scaled to match the um, the skeleton needs to be frozen out, so I'll just go ahead and do that. So um, that's just a good uh, thing to check before you actually do, um, do your binding. So to do the actual bind, select the hips, select the mesh, and then go skin, bind skin, and these are the different binding methods. We're going to use smooth bind. Uh, rigid bind is for uh, basically uh, making a vertex, uh, each vertex only follow one joint. Uh, and you can use some other um, other deformers like lattices and stuff like that to make the, um, your deformations look the way that you want them to. In this case though, smooth bind is what we want and we have two methods of doing that. An interactive skin bind which adds these little capsules, and I'll just go ahead and show you this, um, which is a very cool idea. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and turn off wireframe unshaded, and then I'll go back to my shaded view. And if you can't see, this might be graphics hardware dependent, I'm not sure, but if you can't see the influence, if you go back to default quality rendering, and then in my case press Y, you can actually see where the influence is there. And uh, the idea of this is uh, actually really cool. You would select a joint and it'll put a little capsule around it to show you um, the influence that that joint has. Um, and in this case, what I would want to do is scale this down uh, so that it made sense. So I'll probably scale this one down and bring it down a little bit here. Um, scale this one down, I'll lose in influence on the other leg. Uh, something like this, and then just maybe bring this one down. So this would be my default waiting for my left thigh, and it shows you to fall off through different colors, which is a very cool idea. Um, but in actual practice, at least on my machine, it's been extremely buggy. So let me just switch to the shin, for instance. So switch to the shin, and I get this weird thing here. Obviously, the capsule is supposed to be over here, and what I get is a ghost capsule on the opposite leg, and then my actual manipulator is up here. And if I try to move this, it will jump around in space. Uh, it is potentially usable, but uh, obviously this is quite buggy and not something I really want to use. So I'm just going to back out of this. I just want to show you what that worked like. And if you have a hot fix that addresses that, uh, maybe it will work fine for you. But I'm just going to back out of here. Okay, so here I should uh, be uh, before the binding. So it looks good. So I'm going to again select the hips, select the mesh, and then choose skin. And this time under bind skin, I'm going to choose smooth bind. I'm just going to pull out to options. I'm going to reset those settings. And there are a few things that I um, would want to change here. Um, first, let me just hit what these settings do, um, just as a quick overview. So bind to, in this case, the joint hierarchy, which is what we want in this case. We want this whole mesh to be influenced by all of the joints in here, and we'll select what influences where. But if, for instance, let's say you had a character that had arms that were a separate mesh, then what you could do is select your arm mesh, wherever it started, say underneath a sleeve or something, and then just bind that to the selected joints. And in that case, you could just have, you know, the upper arm down through the fingers selected. And then you wouldn't have to deal with, you know, the spine accidentally influencing part of the arm that you didn't intend it to or something like that. Uh, but again, in this case, joint hierarchy is uh, what we're going to do here. Uh, the bind method being closest in hierarchy, uh, typically that's going to work best. That means that uh, these vertices that are, are these um, yeah, I guess these um, vertices that are contiguous over here with this mesh will be more influenced by this joint because they are contiguous. There's a gap between here, so it won't influence this area over here as much. Whereas closest distance means it's just going to use the distance to figure out what to weight, um, uh, what joints to weight vertices to, which in this case would mean this part of the foot would be weighted to this joint on the opposite foot, which is obviously not what we want. So closest in hierarchy is going to work best here. Uh, these skinning methods, without getting into a lot of detail, um, this classic linear is what um, Maya has done uh, for a long time. I guess that's why they call it classic. 
um, and it will allow your mesh to lose volume through um, twists. So typically this would happen through the arm or something. If you twist on a joint, you end up squishing, um, so it pinches down. Dual quaternion, uh, through some math magic uh, that I do not understand and probably never will, uh, somehow combats that and tries to maintain volume uh, through a twist. Um, and you can use weighted blended, which is uh, basically a map that you can paint so it uses um, either one at any point. Um, so uh, you can change this after the fact, and uh, since I'm familiar with classical linear, I will just stick with that. Uh, normalize weights. Um, really quickly, I'll just explain what normalizing weights does. Uh, what you're doing when you're skinning is you're saying, hey, this vertice, follow this joint 70% and follow this joint 30%, let's just say, just to keep this simple. And that means as this arm, uh, as the arm moves here, it's going to move 70% of what this moves and 30% of what this moves, which in this case means it will move 100% because when this joint moves, this joint moves too. But when the forearm moves, it would move 30% as much as this joint moves. So um, hopefully that part makes sense. Um, now what normalization does is it just makes sure that however many influences you have, they all add up to 100%. And in, in Maya's case, Maya uh, has a scale of 0 to 1, but you can just think of that as percentages and decimal point value. So if this vert right here was influenced by, let's say, four uh, joints, maybe the wrist, the forearm, the arm, and um, the shoulder, then all of those um, influences together would add up to uh, 100%. And this normalization is just asking you when that needs to happen. Obviously, you want that to happen. If you go over 100%, then you'll start getting some quirky results. And if you're under 100%, you'll get some quirky results as well. So you should normalize. So this none option is pr probably not what you're going to choose. Um, interactive means um, as you're painting, if you say, um, this vert had let's say 20 percent influence from uh, the forearm and I wanted that to be more like 40 percent if I add 20 percent to it then it's going to subtract that 20 percent from the other joints that are affecting um, that vert and that will happen in real time uh, that's why it's interactive and post means after you're done painting it will make that change so I want to go ahead and stick with um, interactive here um, not going to worry about allowing multiple bind poses. Ours is just going to have one bind pose. Uh, max influences. In our case, with a simple character like this, I could drop this down uh, maybe to three, but I'll just leave it at four or so to, to be safe. And then drop off rate. This is something we're going to play around with um, now. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, do this bind here at drop off rate of four, which is the default. And just uh, take a look at the elbow as an example of um, what to look for when you're setting up a default. So I'll select the elbow and rotate it and notice that it's crushing the body quite a lot here. So for the forearm moving I wouldn't expect the body to crush quite this much and you're always going to have to go back and, and paint and fix things but this is a little extreme for a start place. So let me just back this up to, um, to before the bind. One more, there it goes. And um, I'll go back into our smooth bind options and in this case maybe I'll just push this up to uh, 9. I've uh, played around with this and you'll just have to push up until you find something that works but in, in order to save some time I'll just jump to it. So I'll push that up to 9 and then as I rotate this notice that the body isn't getting crushed anymore. Um, so that's more of the sort of weight that I would expect. And the elbow itself will actually look a little better as well. Uh, this will still need quite a lot of refining, but you can see that it's starting to have a little bit of a collapse point instead of uh, looking all rubbery, which is what it looked like at uh, fall off rate of four. So uh, nine is, uh, is going to be a better um, drop off for this character. Uh, so that's what I would go with as my defaults for um, setting up the binding. Uh, that's where I'm going to leave this one. Next video I'm going to pick up uh, painting skin weights and using the component editor to, um, to set up weights.